time. So let me first call the roll. Uh, Councilmember Nakamura? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Linda Mood? Here. Councilmember Wheat's not right here, but I'll say on camera she did uh, email me, said she was going to be a, a few minutes late, so I expect her to be here. We'll so note that when she gets here. The mayor's here, Councilmember Dodson? Here. Councilmember Kelly? Here. And uh, Councilmember Riggs is not here, but I assume she will come, so we'll note that when she gets here. So we have three uh, real items on the uh, agenda today. Uh, the first one we was looking forward to hearing is the yes. Highway 26 medium and right away design. So I believe, uh, although we have seen 3D video of the concept design, this is the first time that we have discussed it, that it's been presented to council in a formal work session setting. So we're looking forward to it. And thank you guys so much for those 3D videos, renderings. They're really, really nice. They're very helpful. <laughs> I'm amazed at how good uh, 3D simulations are these days. <laughs> yes. So that, you can spend that to the screen. Perfect. Perfect. Well, Mary, you took words uh, right out of my mouth. I thought it was, I'm sorry? No, I, I just just a second, because then they're going to want to start that video right after that. Okay. So I'm. Oh, okay. Really and there's, that's fine. Ca there's Council it's Person it. Rigney right now. Okay, Perfect. so Council Member Rigney is walking in the door. So see you okay. later. Her is present. Perfect. So I was just going to say, Mary took the words right out of my mouth. I think it's important that um, we kind of remind ourselves where we're at in the process, because we've been talking about State Highway 26 medians and right of way design for. You know, a number of months at this point, but tonight is really the first time where we've taken some of that initial conversation and um, Mesa's going to have the chance here to, to lead a discussion and um, look at that kind of holistic corridor conceptual design. Um, so we're really excited to share that and talk through that with the council, um, gather any feedback, and, and really that's the main goal is because this is the first chance for us to look at all of this together. Obviously we had the wonderful um, videos for the State of the City presentation, but this is the first public meeting in which we've got a chance to discuss and say, you know what, this part's really awesome, you know, I might like a, um, a tweak here in this particular design area, and um, that's really valuable feedback feedback because we want to have that conversation before we move to any future phases and talk about taking this forward to the public for their input and discussion. Um, so that's one of the really um, big overall goals for tonight. Um, we'll talk about next steps and um, so Mesa is going to, um, we're going to play the video um, and then we'll kind of go back in and in the PowerPoint presentation there are different still images of different points along the corridor because it's a little hard to start and stop the video and say okay well, let's talk about this piece so we've teed up tonight to watch the video all together and then go through different aspects of the design elements um, through the still slides is there anything you guys want to add before we move to the video or no i think you've kind of covered it. i don't know about you guys i'm hot it's hot it's hot in here if i'm hot it's hot <laughs> Just open that door. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. No, seriously. I will freeze. Yes. All right. Mayor and Council and Adrian, thank you so much. We appreciate it. We really uh, have been really enthusiastic uh, with this effort. And I do want to introduce two new people. Jason's been with us from our office all along the way. I've got uh, Kevin Bernauer. He's a, an associate. He jumps in at this stage because of a lot of the construction methodology and costing side of it. We're starting to get into that. So he's been put on board with us, and he comes in at this stage. I've also brought along uh, John Allender. He's with Architexas, uh, an architect, a principal there at Architexas. Uh, they do a lot of significant architecture, and their expertise is at this kind of stage is important as well. Uh, so he will be uh, facilitating some of the more complicated and uh, expertise that we need from that standpoint and John will go into his portion in that regard uh, but we're looking forward to it and as uh, Adrian said this is really definitely getting that feedback from you so nothing is set in stone at this stage uh, and so it's an evolution and there's budgets and things that are moving things around and changing things so uh, we're very confident about where this is heading great okay, okay.
It's so quiet. But it's awesome. So I think some of the additions you probably saw in the video from the time we had it with State of the City were some of the nighttime images mm -hmm. and then some additional shots um, of the different median areas. Yeah. So as you can see, it's uh, really evolved uh, from our previous uh, rendition that we met with you last time. And again, that happens a lot of the time because we're in concept. Uh, this isn't schematic or design development and construction documents. So uh, there's a lot of experimentation and, and, and debate that goes on with these in design. And so you know, your participation, or this, we're auth you're authoring this with us together. Uh, so we find it very important to get your feedback because it is your community. And we're here as a tool to get that done, your vision. Um, so your feedback is really important. I will say that we did pay uh, early on when we started this process with your comp plan done earlier by another consultant. Uh, we looked through that pretty seriously. And so we had pulled a, a number of things out of that comp plan along the way that's been a part of this uh, journey with us. And so, for instance, the enhancement of the Caldwell character and brand, uh, that we wanted to make sure that addressed the economic spine, uh, Highway 26. Uh, enhance Colleyville's economic resilience, uh, promote a sense of place along the Colleyville Boulevard corridor, uh, transform Colleyville Boulevard into a true destination with a set of co uh, coordinated public and private improvements, an increased pedestrian and bicycle uh, accessibility, uh, and uh, create a cohesive development character along the corridor uh, while recognizing key nodes. So these areas are special places for this. So those are just a few. There was a number of those, but we really looked at that, and we feel that that's a guideline that we always need to follow that because you signed off on that, and that's something the community has bought into. So I feel like that, uh, the design really is moving in that direction. Obviously, it can articulate itself in a lot of different ways, but that's why we're here tonight to uh, kind of go through that and get your feedback. Um, Goals for today, we're going to look at the overall design, which you've seen update, and we'll kind of go through those in detail. Uh, the second thing is going to be uh, our actual, it looks like we got cut off. I think the screen's a little short. I think the second one was the council feedback. And council feedback. And just and discuss the next, next steps. steps. The next steps where we're headed. Yeah. So we'll get through this. Clearly, we don't want to be another long, drawn-out one. I know we had that first time that it was quite a lengthy one. Uh, you will know, go ahead and click to the next. Oh, do I have Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> We've carried this, our kind of critical path here of our schedule. <coughs> we're in really good shape from that standpoint. No concerns for where we are in the progress of this. Uh, as you can see down here, uh, where we're going to be moving into the construction document phase of this. And so we've got two kind of packages moving simultaneously, which is the lighting package, uh, and then the Colleyville design package, which is the corridor and threshold kind of uh, monumentation. We're in really fine shape from that. We'll have plenty of good time to get your feedback and incorporate that and continue to progress our efforts here. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Birthday Thank you. girl. Well, <laughs> oh, no, no. We is here. She's actually running it. Oh, okay. I, was, okay. I believe. Trying to get it. Uh, just not They're scrolling her down. I thought I was doing that. I was like, okay. Watch this, no hands. Yeah. Control L. Should do it. Yeah. Control L. Control L. Control L. That works. Okay. Medium design. So this is kind of the bread and butter of the corridor, right? This is kind of, it's a three mile stretch. We got a lot of things going on. We kind of want to tie all these design elements into one cohesive thing, right? So medium design, as you guys have seen before, we have kind of three different designs that evolve as they get closer to the downtown core as you know as we discussed in our previous meeting at the outer edges the stone walls that were the serpentine walls we talked about early on they're more uh, more natural more uh, craggly and then as we move towards the downtown core they get a little bit more architectural a little bit more refined um, so just looking to get your feedback on on that is that is kind of a core part of the design because it's about your ruralness that you have that's so wonderful the, the non-curb roadways into your neighborhoods and community. They're 
its fabulous drives. Mature canopy trees as Mature well. Mature canopies and all those things. So here we're moving out into the kind of more of the open. So we want to bring some of that geology and nature that kind of extrudes into this and it be formatted in a much more kind of uh, controlled Are those way. Those uplights on the trees? We have uh, a combination of uplights and we'd have some downlights. Uh, right. Do we know how many trees at this point has that been uh, addressed? Because I love all the trees. Do we know a total down this? We do. Well, it's, you know, it, it, we do as a snapshot in time, and I don't know what that number is off the top of my head. But, but it's, it's a lot, Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Like it's a lot. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot. It's a lot of big lot. trees. All the trees in the your forest. Yeah. Well, I just want to make sure that we're talking <laughs> what's in the video there. Yeah. No, what you're awesome. saying in the video is reality. Okay. And it's reality even from a grading standpoint, uh, from the grades that are on these roads okay, and so forth. So you're seeing what you would see. Okay. You're seeing, like. And you're seeing these trees of six, eight inch caliper. Okay, good. Do you have still pictures of each of the versions of the medians or just this one? Yeah, we do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, those, and those are kind of presentations. I just like to see it on the screen. I have it on my laptop. Well, but I bring to we, another we question real quick. Yeah. This is still. I had a concern where where they showed the um, There's different versions. areas where people were walking. It just this is now I saw it real quick and I saw it the other day before I saw it and that's what made me think about it. It looks to me like a car could go over there very easily. Am I missing something there? We got bollards. I saw that on the corners, corners but, but, but the I didn't. The best of it is a curb and then it breaks down into a non-curbed uh, ramp around the corner. And the at the, at the major right. intersections. No, I'm not talking about major intersections. Let me ask this. Are you going to dial down the corridor? So where yeah, the we're going to continue end? looking yes. at all yeah. the stills from the video. When I see it, I'll tell you. Because I had a concern about that. Okay. So, yeah. But to your point, there are a couple of different wall types that we showed in the video. We'd like to hear your feedback on this being one, this being another one, and then this being the third. So like we, can, three. we can go I like back the first two. I do too. I don't I like care for that one. one. Oh, I really like one. the first one, but then I wonder the uplights. Is that even? I thought it looked pretty neat with the. I like the uplights behind each one of those. Right, it shows us other. Yeah. And Stan, let's just be clear that I think the intention is not necessarily to select between the three, but right. to get feedback on right. having so. one style that's more at the northern gateway area, right. and then you get into the transitional zone and it morphs into a second style. That's the and then, you, right. yeah, so the intention here is to have three different styles as you move through the corridor one for the gateway zones, one for the transition zones, and one for the downtown core. That's important. Where we're right, and the, and, Why the is that? Right. and the specific design, right. we're, we're still, to be honest, yeah, it's still evolving. I mean, we're still working through the realities of what kind of stone it is, sure. how large a block of stone can we can we get that's that's be processed because there's a lot of cost. Pro yeah, right. Well, that, that makes sense from an so economic is, standpoint. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of processing and sawing, and so that runs a cost up. So we're looking at the re reality of the material. These billets they bring out the quarry beds. So that will. And we're that meeting with. Uh, Con the, the contractors and people that sell the material. So we're trying to act with color. And so there, a lot of these are moving parts right now. Yeah. Well, talk about your rationale and thought process and going from the northern gateway, which you showed first, down into the, that one. And as you move to the downtown core, go to that one. And the next one you got to that. What is the thought process and like those shapes and that change? What are you trying to show? You're trying to really kind of accent the uh, the arrival to the down core, downtown core. It's a lot more uh, been handled. Man's kind of controlled and it's uh, much more refined in a sense, you might say. And I'm not saying that just the, is the way that it should uh, speak yeah. to itself because we're starting to find it might be a little costly. Uh, but it and probably in scale, <coughs> we feel it needs, it's not quite the right scale either. It's a little small. Yeah. Uh, but I think it needs to not be so... Uh, such a domino look, the Doppler. Right. No, that's yeah. my, my, my like first barrier. reaction is the big, the big blocks to me uh, show a sturdiness and solid right. mm -hmm. that solidity, even if you space them out a little bit. Right. They right. don't necessarily yeah. have to be on top of each other. And honestly, that's one of the scenarios that we're, we're still we're batting around yeah. in the you're, office. You're trying to exactly transition that. from rustic to urban kind of thing. Exactly. That's right. Yes. So they're trying to identify the northern gateway as more of a 
tying to the country past or more the rural past and the, the geology. It, it, yeah, and that's why they're they're trying to tell that story through the rock. That's why the different it's the raw uh, material being brought out and kind of set on 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 place. Yeah. And as we move in, it's been more uh, manned. More tool. refined. Are we worried about the actual material. materials? Like I really like how that shape and um, like style shows the natural material. To me, like that trapezoidal shape sort of gets away from right. what you're trying to yeah. accent. I mean, I think if we did more boulder shapes and rectangular yes. shapes, that might be more a way so, to differentiate them. It's all great feedback. Yeah. But are yeah. we worried about people like sitting, that. like walking yeah. up over there no. and sitting on them? No, no. I'm not sure. Pretty well, much Jerry not. over there, huh? <laughs> Pretty not. much not. You'd have to cross <laughs> three lanes. Right. Well, <laughs> I mean, you're, you're not, it's not going to be really conducive no. to that. I mean, well, it could happen, but. If they do, then you know that's usually an exception, not the rule. Yeah, yeah. it'll be very rare. I would say that might be a nice place to sit and watch traffic. Go. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a good question about the outer edges, where there is not a lot of street in these areas. There's not a lot of street furniture and a lot of uh, right. seating areas because that really stays to those more intersection designs. Right. So really, these areas are more about creating a divide and a nice boulevard effect with the trees and the high-low appearance than it is kind of uh, right. I mean, walkable. I think, I think it looks really good how you broke up the corridors. I even like all three patterns. I think that by having those three patterns, the maintenance around them is going to be a lot more easier than if you have something that maybe just jagged edges all the way through at different spots. I think it just looks conducive. It looks sleek. It makes the corridor look long. It, and again, the breakup of it, I think it's amazing. I think it looks great. Gives a little flair towards downtown area, and then I think that's exactly what we want for right here is to show people this is where downtown is. Go, go to the downtown again. Okay. So you made a comment that so the size of those looks smaller to me, and yeah. it, is I, small. It, it does look like nearly barriers. It's, yes. I mean, I saw, I'm, yeah. I'm not disagreeing with maybe changing, but that particular mm -hmm. very uh, angular. Yeah, I like this. I like have the a, square. Like, I don't have a reserve yeah. on it. The only reason is because you got the big square as you roll in, yeah. and you got the smaller, or the not so big boulder. Yeah, uh, yeah, the more of that, and then it comes into a different shape completely to show what they downtown look like is. Like cemetery markers. Not a design. Good feedback. Well, no, it's okay. good feedback. No, it's good. I, agree with no, it, I mean, this is this is all fine because, as, as we said, we're evolving. Yeah, so, right, right. I got a question about the basic premise that Bobby's talking about. You guys are talking about this, this downtown core, and we're evolving to downtown. We're past. I mean, but you know, what's what's it going in say twenty years? I, I don't know if you'll distinguish. I mean, I, you know, we're talking about the, this downtown court being very urban yeah. and the other stuff. Right. Well, we're going to build stuff and then build the gateway. Yeah. It's going to be nice. That's it's going to meet our conditions. Mm -hmm. But th is, that a, a, is that a true premise of just, you know, saying we're urban down there? I mean, I don't, I don't like the word urban, but I don't need yeah. it anywhere. You know where point. Like it, 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 <laughs> no, I agree. I, I, I don't like that. Exact that same that first, so, but then whenever you look, we have the tower. <laughs> That's we have the really tower. Is. We have the wall. Yeah. It actually gives a really nice accent to that. That that. Yeah. That's not going to look just countrified down there. It actually gives this mo more modern mosaic. You know. Well, I, I mean, I, I would probably use slightly different words. I love the verticals. I love the tower looking. I love the rock. Uh, custom to me, what does that connotate? That connotate it's real. It's it's heavy duty. It's oh, yeah. Yeah. quality. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it will be yeah. there forever. I mean, that's the, yeah. which is a connotation of quality. Yeah, I, I think the premise was that you're even though that will develop down yeah. there, yeah. and you've got a downtown in the yeah. south end will develop yeah. as well. That it, it gives a sense of district, and so you're in a zone, and that's how we looked at it day one: is that you want to distinguish your your uh, spine. Yeah. So people have a cognitive kind of map about where they are. And so having that kind of difference. And, you know, these, like I said, I, yeah, these could be pieces. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> these could be much more all put together and have segments and not have that kind of way yeah. look yeah. 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 and be done differently, even geometrically. So yeah. we're studying that, and we will be back to come uh, show you those because I think I'm hearing a lot of feedback in regards to it. And I might also just ping on, I think all of us are, 
fairly price sensitive to the fact that if that's the most expensive shape and we don't love it anyways, let's definitely look a different direction. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Um, I agree with yeah. that. Absolutely. Well, are Just those solid pieces one piece of stone? Yes. So you're having yeah, to right. find Each them and you're having to cut right. them? Yes. Custom sure. make them where that well, would just be a mason. Yeah, it's, when you talk about quarries and they got these. These are what come out of this. Yeah, they come out of these billets and they cut them. And we looked at how the quickest, uh, easiest, and most economical way and we're moving these things around and how they operate. We know how sure. these quarries do these things. And the stones quarries are different in different regions. In Salcedo, uh, Salado, or yeah. and, uh, the, in Oklahoma. And we're looking at stone that is looks regional to this location. Right. So. We've got a lot of little pieces, but we also, the budget's going on right now, and Kevin and several of the people are, we've met numerous sure. times on this, and we're getting there. So, it is going to change at the urban, or the downtown core. So, are the type of comments you're hearing what you needed to hear? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. yes. So, it sounds like we've got some pretty good feedback on the median design then. Um, do you all feel like you need any additional feedback in I, terms of the medians? Yeah, I've got a question about the trees. If they're six inch caliper, mm -hmm. How tall are they going to be, and do we have an issue with semis that are 14 feet tall running right alongside of these? We, uh, there's species, uh, there's a particular one we really like, that, uh, it's called the Princeton American Elm. Princeton uh, American Elm? Princeton American Elm. It's much more ovate. Yeah. Uh, they're very tall. They're uh, 25, 30 feet tall at 6 inch. Right. And they're in containers. Uh, these come from uh, Georgia. Are very uh, uh, do very well in this climate, uh, and they'll stay in that ovate state instead of getting broad and yeah. lollipop, and yeah. the trees end up shearing those. So sure. the idea is they grow yeah. in that nature, yeah. uh, and so your clearances are much clearer. Even uh, they're almost 10 to 12 feet to the branches starting up. Yeah. They're okay. so and they're that's actually the center of the median, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I understand, but but there are trees where the turns are and the, and the median is not very wide there that's what I'm concerned about right I and mean, we would avoid planting the large trees, trees or even ornamental trees in those median nose areas Sims for that reason yeah. most okay. of your left turn lane stacking has no trees well, there's in visibility I just, I just in the nature. I I go, go back and find we that. Trees in but we are very cognizant of that, that. Um, we've actually done studies with the semis next to that and seeing what we're yeah. looking okay. at um, but we're not looking at a, a red oak that gets broad. Sure. Um, and, uh, but we do want something that's deciduous, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it will have great fall color. So there's a lot of those kind of aspects that we're looking to. Are the are the elms uh, any problem with elm Dutch disease? Not on the Dutch elm, there isn't on this particular cultivar. Uh, so they're resistant, and they're a pretty high commodity right now in the market. So, it could be one type of tree is what you're thinking? Well, we could. I mean, we could look at a, a one down the spine, or we could do it in the districts as well. So uh, yet to be kind of determined on that, so that stage. I have a question. And with the, the solid um, ledge, I guess, of stone, does that limit the growth of some of those trees if they're close to the root? I mean, no. Uh, the methodology we'll be using on those, uh, uh, the stone can actually, uh, we can uh, avoid using spread footings can be set on a, a basically a road based material because they're really we're not they're natural so uh, they might move a little bit but they're not going to get you know really out of kelter but that allows that moisture uh, roots to move and so forth so but there's plenty of room in these uh, medians for root growth great feedback so the gateway so, design we're going to get into here and in, uh, John, we'll talk, let's talk a little bit about the site and location of the, of the gateway design in the north. Um, again, you'd seen these, the ribbon, as we said, kind of the ribbon element, which is the beginning of the northern gateway, which we call the pastoral, and then the culmination to an actual uh, landmark feature. But as you can see in the background, we've got an actual kind of uh, floodway um, stream bed that's intermittent. Uh, that's taken into consideration. This is where that park is. Sure. So there are a few trees up at the front that uh, would be removed, but the idea is to reforestate, leaving those behind and reforestate uh, that and create that backdrop to that, shielding off kind of the railroad kind of element. And the walls kind of do that for us from that standpoint. But I think the thing that's really come out of this as it's evolved, we've got this kind of wonderful prairie sculpted landscape, uh, and it'd be uh, kind of that native grasses and wildflowers and such. 
uh, but to the back side, you have actually opportunity to park steel being in, in, in existence. So that's why the path moves to the back side. You saw in the actual video that kind of interaction. Uh, there could be a, a possibility that that stream bed could be uh, re uh, dammed up in the future. It is in what we've got priced in this, but turned into pools of water. So it becomes kind of an element to that park experience. Uh, and then the head wall on that to be kind of like worked that. on as well. Yeah. Hey, hey, wife asked me when she saw that. Said, it's a pond back there. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, it used to flood. Do you remember that? A lot of <laughs> 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 but even no, it flooded a lot. When this we, may flood in the front. Video. Oh yeah. 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 This may flood well, we in the front as well. Still, and that's okay. We had huge storms because oh, it's a riparian zone, and we, that's what we want to see. So there'll be this dynamic of that wall and the water and the ground plane and the uh, kind of riparian gr uh, grasses and things that we grow in. I like that idea. So it's really exciting, and, and from that standpoint, it'll have a lot of kind of change in it. Yeah. I have a question about the cobblestones because that's the bike path there, and uh, it's going to be real cobblestones. Or are these pressed? It, there's a number of ways to achieve that. Probably more like it'll be concrete, uh, and uh, and how we handle that. We we just put it in that context. It can be achieved, but it would be very costly. Uh, we just went into it. This is a concept that we were very excited about because we wanted to kind of break into that natural element, took our liberties, but uh, more than likely it'll probably end well, up. I think your point is there's a lot of bicyclists coming out of the trails. Mm -hmm. so and and riding over cobblestones is not, well, a, I think it's not told, a lot of fun. Yeah. You told Adrian that we're just going to put mountain bikes on the leaves. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Councilmember Dotson, I actually mentioned the exact same um, feedback to them earlier this afternoon. I think I'd heard that from several folks since we played the State yeah. of the City of video, so they, they were aware of that concern. Sure. So I noticed in the video when the guy walks around behind this wall. Right. Um, you see that bridge. There's stone on that bridge. Yes. Is that part of it? It is not. Okay. <laughs> but we have to continue to paint the the, the picture. You know, yeah. We can't help ourselves. We're artists. <laughs> and so, yes, that is a... The reason I asked that is you said, hey, this is what it's going to look like. So, that's about... No, not first right. face. <laughs> first face. <laughs> but it, that is... Uh, if we can you can work with that that's a concrete structure right now yeah. it's a culvert uh, we yeah. work with those all the time but those okay. can definitely be uh, addressed at a later date right. yeah it will not uh, yeah. Yeah. Another. you always have to we always kind of complete that because that's a it is a park in a way still yeah. Yeah. In our mind, it's a destination yeah. 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 to yeah. your yes. bit, so, so the grade of this so to George's question so if you're out there now <coughs> right, it's low and goes up. Uh, is, or is that regraded or is that built within that context? Or? We'll build this up in the okay. front. So, okay. And then it'll be dropped off in the back. Yeah. We've already done some preliminary discussions with the civil on that about the hydraulics and if there would that be a problem in yeah. uh, you know, the storm water uh, storage and so forth. And uh, he said, no, you'd be fine with that. But yeah. there'll still be modeled and so forth to see how that performs. But, yeah. uh, no issue, but we have to fill that up. I think it would. Uh, one, it makes the walls diminish, the well, tower diminish. It raises the sign up. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. So those walls are 5, 9, and 16 as they come to the tower. And then I'm going to let John roll into this, but the tower is about a 70-foot tall five, tower. 5, 9, and 60 16 what? The wall the wall tall, height. The height of the wall. Height, yeah. 5 first? Which way? Uh, five, 5, 9, 16. Oh, north south. 70, right? Something like yeah. that. <laughs> so, and these walls are also at the base 4 feet thick. Okay. They taper up, so they're kind of gravity looking. Yeah. yeah. So if you did a thin wafer of a right, one foot or an right, 18 yeah. inch, it will look real flimsy. I know. So we have to make it look very sure. substantial yeah. on the scale of the site. I agree. So I'm going to let John kind of set next. Um, yep. Here we go. Um, thanks, Dan. Uh, again, first of all, I want to say thank you uh, again for for having me here tonight. When um, when Stan and the Mason team called, uh, asked if we wanted to be involved in this, we jumped in. Chance. It's a really, it's a unique project, um, and something that we really value at Architects is this idea of creating and defining space, and, and really identifying the character of the, of the place and, and bringing that to life. So, when we first sat down and, and looked at the project, um, obviously we had some catching up to do, and um, there were a lot of questions. And the, the, the first, I guess, like any architect, we asked. Why are you doing it like that? Why can't we do it some completely different way? And so, um, looking at the towers that that were essentially placeholders in the, in the concepts, um, we really we started asking questions of you know, why are these towers there? 
what are they? So, you know, Architects is, our, you may not know a firm, but um, we've, we've been privileged to work on a number of historic structures around the state of Texas, including a number of county courthouses and um, significant buildings around the state. And so we're used to starting all of our projects with a pretty intensive research period. Um, and so looking, and, and that research period always kind of informs uh, the design. So looking at the history of Colleyville and the agricultural and ranching history of the, of the place, um, you know, we realized that to translate some of that history into a vertical form, it didn't really necessarily align with the comp plan and you know, the, the ideas of excellence and uh, reinforcing the brand of, of Colleyville. Um, you know, we could have looked at water towers or grain silos or you know, some of those agricultural forms. Um, but we understand that wasn't going to be appropriate for this project. So we, we looked at Colleyville as a place today and, and its aspirations for the future. So looking at the town center and stylistically what was achieved here and pulling off of those, um, those cues. We, we went back and did some research as to, you know, what, what would be appropriate for um, a kind of Tuscan, um, medieval, you know, historical precedent for a, a, a tower. And, and we found in our research several different reference points for that. Um, so in, in working with, with Mesa, talking about the, this kind of evolution or progression of, of design as we come from north to the city center to, to the south, um, from a pastoral to a town center to a creek side, looking for reference images that really could um, start to inform why that tower would be in that spot. And then really looking at authenticity of construction methodologies, simplifying actually the forms, um, because historically these, these structures are very, they're actually very simple things. Um, they're load-bearing masonry, small openings, and very simple roof forms to them. Um, and, and, and with that, you know, we started looking at the idea that um, at, at the pastoral setting, at the gate, at the, the front gateway coming from the north, um, there's, we started kind of riding this narrative of, you know, these events that happen along the way. And it, up north, um, there's this sentry tower. It's a, it's a lookout. It's, a, it's that kind of first vertical element that you see from the horizon as you come in. It's the tallest of these structures. And it, um, it kind of marks in a very significant way that this is, you are arriving in the Colleyville. Um, this is modeled after, you know, a Campanile um, in Tuscany. Um, it is a 70 foot uh, tall structure with uh, this hipped kind of bell tower look to it. Um, but it's, it's actually a simple building. Um, and in working with structural engineers and trying to understand some economy to this, we realized that some of the early concepts um, which had large openings and kind of complicated roofs and, and everything to them would need to be steel frame structures with, you know, light gauge framing and, sh and all that. So what we're really proposing here is this is a load bearing masonry structure. Um, it's a 12 inch CMU on the inside with um, heavy stone veneers to it and simplifying the construction details stripping down the number of subcontractors that have to work on it. Um, we can achieve a higher level of detailing and, and height to it um, that, you know, it, so it reads naturally. It reads, yeah. there's an authenticity to it because it supports itself structurally. Um, so that's... As soon as you said this, man, I don't have thought real. It's real. <laughs> as soon as he said what? It's not fake. It's me, I'm still. A quick question. Uh, does 60 feet require uh, air or 70 feet require uh, light warning light for for airport airport um, because we don't yeah we, we don't have anything in the city that's anything close to that when we need to do our due diligence I think on it's what three or water three stories water really close. Close. <laughs> well water, water towers obviously so. <laughs> but, but I think there's not no other structures yeah. that are this tall. And we thought about it. We, you may know we're, we're doing a lot of work in Great Vine, and we've dealt oh, okay. with the FAA They're over okay. 150 in the flight paths sure through right. there. So um, that we definitely will do our due diligence on that if it needs a marker light. I don't think we, having a light up there would be real. 
Not here. Not <laughs> ideal. <laughs> no. Blue or something. No, we, we like in my house. house. And since I live about a quarter mile from this, having that light up there would help. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that. Um, and we'll do our due diligence. So the, um, the building relates in its articulation to these site walls. Sure. So it's, it's really kind of telling a story. Um, the, the wall is engaged with the tower because you, you, historically you never saw just a tower by itself. It was part of a larger complex. Um, so the site walls start to tell the story. And the way that the Mesa team has really artfully done this, um, there are these threshold inlays of stone along the path so that the, the walls are actually linked together as it walks through there. So as you walk through the walls, you see in, in grade the stone threshold and that, that continuation of the material and design as it comes up to the base of this tower would be a more heavily um, cut stone. And then the shaft as it goes up has the coining and then the rusticated um, feel to it. Um, as, as on a practical note, these are not towers that you go in, that anybody goes inside. Um, there's a man door for maintenance. Um, they're not, there's not an occupied space inside of it. Um, the windows, you know, will be frosted or pick glass to them so you don't really see through. But the key is that with these little openings, you can illuminate that, as you saw in the video, from inside it becomes that beacon. So it will be access for maintenance, but that's, that's it. You're not going inside this. Um, so yeah, at, at the town, so progressing on in um, at the town center, you know, we started to think about, again, this kind of organic development of these towers. And I know at first there was a pair of twin towers um, that flanked the street uh, with, a, with an archway to it. but. In thinking about how old town centers developed, um, it was a more organic <laughs> aggregate of, of development. So we propose the idea of two towers, asymmetric. One is taller, one is, is, is a little bit smaller, sturdier. Um, the taller tower to the south, the, the smaller tower, shorter tower to the, the north side. Um, the idea is that we're really drawing the eye with this taller vertical element. We can go to the next slide, I think. Um, you want to, you want to go yeah, there you, there you go. That's great. Um, we're drawing the eye to the creek exactly. side right. and not to the, you know, the urban development that's behind that. Thanks. Uh, maybe we can back up. <laughs> you want to? Oh, yeah. You Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. No, you're running. So um, in, in looking at, at the site plan, again, thinking about the way that the stone elements in the median and if the, the gateway progressed through, um, Mesa's come back and really thought about the paving and landscape plan through there. So it is this kind of fragmented um, um, pastiche of, you know, there's, there's a timeliness to it, right? It's, um, and that continues through where paving patterns are broken and organically the planting beds are coming through that. And as we come around, that's all linked back together with kind of a similar palette of materials. It's, um, it, it's really a lot more interesting, I think, than the original concept that was yeah. very, very symmetrical. Yeah. 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 So this yeah. has a it's lot a, more life. There's a dynamic to it. Yes. Right. Yes. The towers play off each other, I think. Um, so, right, again, um, similar masonry, a uh, similar stone. We want these to all be of kind of the same geology, sure. but um, there's a difference in the detailing, a difference in um, you know, this buttressed base and the coarse ashlar stone to it. This, these elements might be a little bit older than the century tower that's out on the freight, but you know, this is the old town center and speaking to that. And this is still all using natural uh, regional materials. Right, yes, like, yeah. high iron um, yeah. sandstones. That, yeah, right. yeah. And the craftsmanship is really critical with these. And we're not talking about some of these kind of masons uh, kind of groups. I mean, these are some people that are very talented that know how to join uh, with yeah. and all yeah. that. So all these things will be studied as yeah. we get into mock-ups and things. Sure. You'll start to see right. the samples and go like, wow, this yeah. is interesting. Yeah. Stan really nailed it. I mean, what's going to make these things is the detailing of the masonry, because we're not talking about a big old mortar joint, right. you know, Portland cement gray mortar joints. Yeah. You know, these are these are tight, these are hairline joints, yeah. um, and the mortar is integral color, and it's right. uh, sure. you know the detailing of the stonework 
around those arches. You know, that's that's the precious element where the mason would spend his time, and the rest of the you know, um, it's, a, it's not as refined perhaps as that. So um, again, you know, the idea here is that we have this this point counterpoint of these two towers, um, but really drawing your eye towards the city center as you guys are I think John too from uh, John is brought this up into the depth of the windows mm -hmm. yeah. that mm -hmm. there's authenticity that you get a sense of the of the masonry thickness that it's really thick mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and the windows are set back to give that shadow so I mean, they bring these kind of details to it and that's what <laughs> adds up right. yeah. um, we are we're proposing a similar roof structure uh, roof tile on on all of these um, well I should say the pastoral in, in the gateway yeah. um, this is a, a Ludoichi a glazed a terracotta tile roof um, it you know it's it's a hundred year roof it, it's a um, uh, it's an incredible product um, we've we've used it on a number of historic structures around um, we're proposing a green it, as opposed to the, the ter natural terracotta that you see just to offset these things it might be a, a little bit different um, time but I think the richness of that roof with too. the stone yeah. oh, I like the green are yeah. green and terracotta the only two colors out there um, actually, Ludoichi has a rainbow of colors. Um, yeah, and so we can look at different shades of green, different, um, yeah, we, we can look you can at even different. blend the shades yeah. to make it even have some level of texture. Yeah. Are, they, are they hail proof? <laughs> are they hail proof? <laughs> I, um, I'll tell you. It's I a serious a, question. I, I, I have a, 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 a Luigi towel roof in my house. I've got a 1929 uh, house, and we've gone through hail storms. And, had very little as compared to others that had the uh, composition. Uh, well, I know for, that. But whatever reason why they didn't, mine didn't get hammered like the others. Um, I only had a few, and it's virtually, you know, it's you know, survived they're, quite a long they're time. Very sturdy roots. Terracotta is different than the Spanish tile, right? Or yeah, the Mexican it's fire tile. different. It's it is it's, it's fire. It's a fire. It, it is fire different. It's a different right. clay content. Um, and I'm not looking for a guarantee, <laughs> but <laughs> that word it's, a, it's a very, <laughs> it's important, it's a very <laughs> important consideration. It is. It is a very important consideration um, in, in the maintenance and longevity. We we want to do a 100-year roof um, because there are tower structures and the maintenance of that and re-roofing it. Um, you know, we, we want to consider that. Um, you know, slate, a natural slate would be another option, but in keeping with the brand and kind of the continuation of the the city's image. The, is I this one about as tall? Looks like it's four, it's, this is this is a little bit shorter. It's shorter is it? The first one a bit shorter. Yeah. Well, if you got yeah. six, if they're five or six foot, there. Yeah. Yeah. The, you got more than ten of them. Up with there. the um, the cupola on the pastoral setting, um, it's about five feet taller than this one as it as it stretches up. So um, it's similar, but a little bit tall, a little bit okay. smaller. Um, yeah, to jump in just real quick, we had talked about bollards last time. We put this here because at Main Street, that's where the bollards going to be. Right. Just wanted to show you these. You know, we did look at a bunch of different options for the bollards, like we had discussed. These are four different lighted bollards. Our recommendation is to go with this one that is in that uh, red box, the Cambridge bollard, um, and the, the main reason is because. It matches all the decorative bases of the light poles, which we're showing there on the right. Yeah. And we worked with the manufacturer to kind of come up with a, a version of that that has a very subtle light strip around the top that is not going to glare in somebody's eye as they're trying to drive, but will also provide a little bit of kind of ambiance as, as the city core kind of deserves. So just How want many to get do your, we have total of those? Uh, let's see, I believe Four, eight, it's like... 16. I think it was a dozen or so. Yeah, it's like 16, 32. Okay. 32. I was going to say they're the definition. Like that, yeah. Between the edge of the roadway and the. Yeah. But that's not the place I was looking at. Well, I'm, I'm thinking that might solve the problem that you're talking about right there at the south, southern gateway. What was that? The, it's um, that. Yeah. I haven't People seen the place right I was there. talking about yet. Yeah. Maybe at the southern gateway. It'll yeah, I think that's what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yep. There. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll get to that. So, the creek one? Yeah, that one. That one is. Oh yeah, okay. that's a different view. I was, I was looking at the video. I want to talk a little bit right before you go into it, John. That's the tech stop bridge. It's already built yeah. in place. Uh, the creek is uh, a wonderful natural element. You've got a wonderful tree backdrop here in the lower right corner that wraps around 
the other side is, has a lot more removed from it and cleared. Uh, but what's nice about this location is it really has a wonderful backdrop of the large mature hardwoods. What we're dealing with that bridge, because it kind of up fronts the tower as you're arriving from the south, is to use uh, stains or paint uh, that bridge in the appropriate color to tie up with this as much as possible. Budget's pretty constricting. We really can't veneer this at this stage. It could be later. Uh, and the railing's also done in a such a way that they complement the tower. So just want you to know that that's something at this stage, it's kind of in a concrete gray right now, but it's something that definitely needs to, uh, we think that needs to be addressed with this uh, arrival of this entrance. You're talking about staining the concrete itself as well, about the bridge itself? It could be. Uh, it's, we did not, it's not in this budget right now, but this, a lot of times these can be stained and they're very Thank durable. Yes. I've had a lot of great luck on projects, but the railings and the concrete kind of pilaster elements that are on that as well. Uh, to help them bring in with the color kind of complementing the, the tower structures. Unless it gives landmarks. And you'll, you'll see that in the actual elevation catches that. Okay. So I think the text dot railing was black, right? So yeah, it was blue-black, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea would be to get a warmer, earthy, uh, earthier color bronze tone or sort of nature. blend in more with, with the stonework. So the Creekside Gateway in, in this narrative that we're writing um, is, is perhaps the oldest of these structures. Um, you know, the settlement by the water, which is kind of a natural progression. Um, and so in its placement and its kind of proximity as we built the site up on the creek, um, you know, the, the way that the stonework is articulated right here, essentially it was here first and then the, the roadway cuts through. That, that's kind of why that, that's like that. Um, but um, in, in reference, you know, we were thinking about this, this location. Um, again, why would this structure be here? And started looking at reference images for these old stone cisterns, you know, these, these round uh, water collection uh, cisterns. And, and looking at um, a little bit different stone detailing. This is a, a rubble stone as opposed to a, a cut or, or stacked ashlar. Um, and in the massing of this thing, you know, it, it definitely shows a sense of time and a sense of place, and it feels very rooted under the site with the base and, and this kind of um, bifurcated shaft to it. And then even going so far as proposing that the, uh, the roof structure of this um, actually be a planted roof with the opportunity that, you know, the vegetation could come out over, um, which tells kind of a course of time of things like that happened. Yeah. Birds fly over, seeds drop. Uh, these things happen, as you can see in the photo up there, that's, those kind of things happen over time. So to promote that kind of age, uh, patina, you might say. I love the idea of it. It's not going to look run down, though, is it? I mean, I know that's not the goal, but, no. you know, some of those pictures do look run down. And, and they are. Yes. I mean, I get it. But. That's why they're little. Is that yes, be? I just wanted to clarify <laughs> and make sure we're still on the same page yeah. here. So. Is that going to be a lot of, a lot of uh, cost, though, of, of maintaining, you know, the... the vines or whatever you got up there? No, not really, because uh, what we, uh, one, it'll have irrigation, obviously. It'll be waterproofed, a roof, a very simple pan, a concrete pan structure, drain, all that can be internalized. Um, periodically, that, it can be handled uh, with a, a landscape maintenance guy to get up there if they need to, to remove. They, that's not anything unnatural for them to do that periodically. How tall is that one? How's the access? 40 feet. 40, yeah. It'd be a ladder on the outside. Let me ask a question. Well, they, or a check out they could use a, a, a bucket. Cherry, or a there bucket would not be a bigger ladder, a cherry picker or somebody. Yeah, um, to a bucket truck. Yeah, pretty, yeah. What is a person who runs. doesn't understand everything that you're telling me going to think when they come down the corridor? Are they going to think, did they get confused? They don't, I mean, could they not figure out what they wanted to do? That's my concern. Are they going to think anything like that? Because we understand the story sitting here of why um, you went the direction well, you did. The, the story is really there is there to inform the design and to lend a, you know, a layer and level of detail that without a backstory, we have a hard time you know, lending that sense of authenticity that we, we talked about. So yeah, they're all different and they're all unique, but that really was a response to Colleyville's, you know, the, reinforcing the brand and creating these very unique, Instead of cookie cutter towers all the way down, yeah. a replication of the same thing all the way, it really is this story of well, you know why is why is that there? And there's a you know there will be people will make their own stories up. It's not like I just don't want them to think 
gosh, yeah. Colleyville ran out of money or they got confused. <laughs> they don't, you know. I think the stone, the materiality of it all will uh, pull uh, it flow together. together. Right. Right. Okay. Right. But I think if I'm you, a very visual as John person. said, though, if we get into this, it'll become very suburban then looking if everything started matching perfectly architecturally. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is a subliminal mindset, even though they don't know the story, that they're going to relate it to the creek. That wow, this so it's kind of like if you've ever been to the Wildflower Center down in uh, uh, Lady Bird Johnson's. Yeah. I would say the sign itself lean, lends it a little bit less towards looking like an unplanned right, activity. Right. The signs themselves are consistent. That's yeah. that's yeah. part of the whole the story as well because we you know we were talking about sign. We spent a lot of time yeah. thinking about signage, and you know the natural tendency to just tack some letters on the side of that wall. Um, but the, you know, the, the signage really is the fact that these structures were here and then the town evolved and grew up around them. And at some point, these, you know, became the natural gateways or borders to the town. So yeah. then the sign was put in. And it's, it's a more contemporary, you know, signage. But that contrast with the, with yeah. the stonework. It's, it's good contemporary. Yeah. 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 One, one, one maybe silly question is that's not the entrance to Colleyville. I, I understand. We know. Yeah. And even on the northern, it's not. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, it's, still it's close. It's, yeah, close. it's much closer on the north than it is here. <coughs> a natural, might be confused. But the reason we, we chose those natural locations, natural features has a much more threshold. I understand. Up yeah. there. It's, there's space. There's, space. <laughs> there's no space in the other areas. Right. Well, it feels more like a threshold. When you cross through that, over that bridge, and you go past all those natural trees, it feels like you're entering a new place. It's, it's really, it's, it's, it's exactly that. It's, it's the natural feature defining the, yeah, the boundary okay. versus so the sure. political Com arbitrary boundary. A comment on that. The, this is staying within, you know, generally the scope of the project of 26 reconstruction, but on the staff level, we're also looking at applying for grant money for a green ribbon grant uh, for the area south, uh, more importantly, Brown South, and uh, even Cheeks Barger, because Cheeks Barger at 26, we have three of the four corners. And so you're gonna start seeing a more of a plan there. The difference there, though, is there won't be a boulevard, there's no median, and so there's no ability there's to really bring this theme there. And the right-of-way, the parkway, if you will, is very limited. And so that plan there may be more of adding trees, adding pocket landscaping on the corners, trying to freshen it up so it prepares you as you're entering Colleyville. But the real line Comes that tells in. you you're entering someplace special is going to be tied to the construction of 26. And if ever this is um, tied into the trail system, then it becomes also yes. a natural marker as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. it's the goal, of course. Right. So, yeah. 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 Okay. And exactly. we've applied uh, for money to tie this create a trailhead here that would tie into the nature center. nature center. So the idea is that when the nature center comes to 26, this is the access point. Yeah. Right. And so you kind of, you know, transition uh, to the nature center under the, go down under the bridge. And so it's a nice, it's not, you know, it's kind of unique. It's not a true trailhead in the sense that you've got parking there, but you've got uh, areas nearby that you could park and tie into it. But the nature center is really your destination. Yeah. And so. I like it. Okay. I like it. Hey, Mays, this is the area where you were talking yeah. about. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what keep, is, is that, it what has keeps a curb. the car? It has a curb. It does have okay. a curb. Because right there, it doesn't look like there's anything yeah. keeping it from cars yeah. just going over there. Yeah, that's a curb. We would have a standard, normal curb there. It would be six, six inch. Those curbs are high enough, they bounce you back. Sure. Yeah. They do, it's true. <laughs> Very curvy. How much you can see? How much you can see? How are the um, Bobby's. Trying to think is where we are. Yeah, I, I mean, so in, in, I was just showing the comparison yeah. of all the structures yeah. together. I love it. Mm -hmm. I like the round one like best. I like all and you'll notice the material do, does tie together. Yeah. yeah. So it is somewhat I think it looks tied together, even though the yeah, forms are different. It's been put into it. I mean, it's clear. That it was really well thought out and great thought for the whole corridor and the towers. So. Thank you. Love it. So I'm hearing us kind of transition from the feedback section to yeah. discussion of um, some of the public input yeah. ideas. Yeah. Um, is there any other feedback that we want Mesa to take home with them for refining the design that hasn't been brought up to this point? Just the one question. Um, on, we focused 
primarily on the medians because the parkway is encumbered by utility poles outside of the specific intersections. And so there's other things that are happening at Hall Johnson. Obviously, you saw Main Street on the east side. And so there's a lot more to this than we went into tonight just because of time. Yep. And so those will all be part of a public uh, viewing process. And certainly business owners will be concerned how that um, parkway issue relates to the visibility of their businesses. And so Mesa did a really nice job of trying to keep the businesses visible and not diminish that while creating the nice corridor. And so there's, a, there's an attempt to recognize that concern by local businesses as well. Awesome. Great. So um, then on the, uh, any, any other comments then on that part before we? I just wanted to say too that the challenges with TxDOT and the, all the uh, transformer boxes and switch gears and yeah. all those it's elements that show up in the corner, right? And uh, so those have been uh, challenging, but we've been working closely with Corey and staff and uh, with TxDOT and really trying to, before they get those planted, that we get those hit. Uh, because a lot of times that clutter shows up and becomes yeah. really, you know, something sure. you don't want. Yeah. So, uh, can we get a picture of the, vi or can we get a copy of the video itself? Yep. Yes, yeah, so we've got a link, Turn and it out. will be included in the Friday report. Okay. okay. Good. Good. Um, so on the on the public input strategy side, of course, we want to spend some time getting really good community feedback to make sure you know everyone is is um, you know gets a chance to get um, say you know we love this about the plan. You know, have you thought about these things and um, of course, you know, just like we saw with the plaza or any other major project, there will, you know, be evolutions along the way, and someone will have some brilliant idea of something we haven't thought of. And um, so, as we've, um, you know, Timmy and Kathy and I met to discuss this um, last week, and we're already starting the brainstorming process of what ways can we um, get this out in front of people. And we will, of course, do some traditional open houses, as you know, one would expect. Maybe some more focused at the business community, maybe some more focused, you know, at the um, residential community. Um, but as with our nature in Colleyville, um, that's not good enough. And we, you know, like to take things out to the community to, you know, the best extent possible and not just expect them to come up here to City Hall in their free time to give us their thoughts. So, you know, there's lots of different ways that we can have a, a roadshow of sorts to take this out. And that may take the format of, you know, some PowerPoint presentations. It may take the format of some big boards and some static images that we can have a, a booth of sorts. We've talked about, you know, going in front of um, at a chamber luncheon, at a Colleyville Women's Club meeting, at, um, you know, different events um, throughout town, you know, being out at a sports complex, um, some great ideas on a, on a weekend when there's lots of families out there. You know, I think, you know, some, yeah, exactly. So things like that when there's some natural ways to get that feedback, but um, we'd love some input from the council if there's other specific ways that you would like to ensure that we go about getting that input from the community. Uh, I, think I was kind of thinking named. <laughs> along the lines of potentially going to like Market Street, yeah. and having a table at Market Street with with a video set up. And do they have you know, some um, of the? Uh, do you mean during just regular yeah, week or like on Saturday? Good. Okay. Morning. Or Saturday I'm just morning. curious. I'm just yeah. trying to yeah. get the idea. Uh, yeah. Uh, go find up the other big businesses like Whole Foods and that where you do have a lot of people traffic. Maybe mm -hmm. like lifetime. Time. Yeah. Lifetime. <laughs> That's a great idea. Lifetime would be fantastic. Is what you're saying. Okay. Wonderful. And so one of the other questions that's emerged um, is how we conglomerate that feedback and bring it back to the council. Um, you know, we can make that as um, open-ended or um, kind of concrete objective as we like. You know, when we had the comment cards for the plaza, that was a little bit, you know, that was more just of an in-house informal effort sure. where people could write things and I read them all and kind of tallied, okay, well, in general, you know, these are kind of the categories of feedback we're receiving. We could take that approach. We could do something that's more specifically asking about certain elements and have a standardized survey of sorts, whether that's a, on a paper comment card or something electronic. Um, but there's lots of ways we can go about doing that. So I don't, wasn't sure if there were any preferences. So. Yeah, so uh, the other thing is, uh, well, next step beyond that. So I think there's some work to do in figuring out what that plan of attack is on media and some of the approaches that you're talking about. The other thing that we need, I don't, I'm, I, we can't even start that without understanding what the cost of this is. So you know, I'm going to ask the next time you guys come back is uh, the cost by element because we will have to understand, well, we want to change something or move something or take something out. 
guarantee you we'll go through that conversation. On the staff side, we'll have to identify where, where is the money coming from. We've got different sources uh, that the money can come from. But it's very important that we have that because uh, when we start talking to the public, those questions are going to immediately pop up. And we have to be prepared and even guide some of those conversations around what are the parameters under which the council and the city can even undertake this. So I think the dollars become part of that. So hopefully we're far enough along now. I think we are where you can begin to put that information together. Yes, we've been uh, at all stages, even a concept yeah. we've already uh, formulated some costing. And yeah. so what happens as you evolve it and it gets more refined, the cost are refining yeah. with it. Right. So that cost uh, projections, we call those, are refining yeah. constantly. As we are now with Kevin and with contractors and people that work in this trade, okay. John's uh, side of it too, that we're getting these numbers, unit okay. costs, okay. and then right. we know what we're dealing with, and then uh, having some level of uh, a conservative uh, side of this yeah. with, yeah. there's always the a escalation of construction costs exactly. that go yeah. after so many months, uh, yeah. you know, a percent right. every yeah. month, and, yep. and we're watching these things. Concrete's yeah. going up right now, yeah. and you know, so it's doing this, but yeah. it never really goes down, yeah. it just takes okay. up. So we'll, right. we'll plan to bring this back to the council yeah. then yeah. Yeah. with some of that information and give them a chance to respond to some of the design feedback you all provided, right. and um, when they have a chance to kind of get all of that finalized, okay. we will bring it back. Right. Yeah, I mean, I just yeah. had a, a thought <laughs> when I was looking at, you know, $500 more for a bollard. To me, that's a lot of money. Uh, and so while I like I like it fitting in, uh, you know, that's that's another an extra, what, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 right there. It so, is something that's going to be there forever. Hmm? I mean, it's something that will be there forever. I so, I mean, we no, think I understand. I'm just saying, you know, no, we, we have to have... Money. Yes, I mean, the whole yes. estimates in front of us. I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. What's so, thing I think we'll yeah, present that whole list. One thing I would say with uh, how we do these cost projections, there's a level of prioritization. Okay. Yeah. And sometimes these things can be deferred, uh, certain things. Oh, uh, sure. And so there's a lot of strategies, and it's actually the point. kind of the rest of the design effort that we'll do together with you. I will say as a point of update for the council, in terms of the lighting package, um, that is actually the final construction documents are under review right now, and those will be placed out to bid um, hopefully in the next several weeks. And that's important because the light pole will set the tone for the style, so those are things that will certainly be part of that conversation. Great. Okay. okay. Very good. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. It's a great Thank you. Great Thank you. Great Thank you. Great Thank you so much. Good job. Thank you. Please yeah. add, add in uh, how much it costs to stain the bridge. <laughs> Bobby's going to get out there with a can. Oh, hey, man. Don't take off. Don't take off. Don't take off. Crunch those numbers, Kevin. Oh, yeah. We're crunching them all the time. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Because George will come after you. But I hate to be the... No, that's your job. It's a balancing act. It's a really good point. That's your job. Item number two, which is stormwater master plan that raised for Yes. Right. Mayor, Council Members, good evening. Ray Savore is Director of Public Works. Wanted to bring you an update on the, on the drainage master plan that uh, we've been working on for about four months now. Um, we just recently got done with the public meeting back on January 30th, so we still haven't been able to capture all those comments. We yeah. just completed that, but we'll, I'll provide that maybe sometime in the Friday report. Just wanted to show you what we've been working on so far. So, and I'll try to make it as quick as possible. I know we got some other stuff. The drainage master plan, of course, is a comprehensive uh, evaluation of the, of the city's uh, stormwater system. So we're looking at it from a 30,000 feet elevation, yeah. looking at it holistically, seeing how it works and what, where some of those problem spots are at. Uh, we're mainly looking at the low water crossings near uh, creeks and uh, tributaries of that sort. Those are going to be your main drivers. Uh, the results of this evaluation will be we'll get a prioritized list of all these identified problems, whether it be roadway uh, inundation or just uh, some low flooding areas, and we'll have some uh, some solutions for those and some uh, developed costs for those. Now, they may come in the form of uh, capital projects to solve some of those issues, or they may come in some simple forms as uh, operation and maintenance, something that the Public Works Operations Centers will be responsible for maintaining ditches uh, mm -hmm. once a year mm -hmm. and keeping up with that plan to make sure, it, make sure the conveyance of the stormwater is being done appropriately. So again, that project list and associated costs will be developed implemented into a document that we can use as a roadmap over the next 10 to 20 years. There are quite a bit of projects that have been preliminarily, preliminarily identified. And so once we have those, the costs associated with those and prioritize each one of those projects, uh, we'll come back and 
use that uh, document as a way to start looking at projects and which ones we want to do over the next couple of years or so. <coughs> Again, um, the goals and objectives are to identify all those risk areas. We know most of these already, but there may be some that we didn't know about, so we had uh, our uh, consultants go out there and try to look at some of those areas. We've been going through emails from the past, making sure that all those areas have been identified in this, in this plan. And um, again, just looking mainly at the roadway crossings are most of our major areas that we have seen so far. There are some subdivisions that are uh, impacted by those roadway crossings that overflow into their property. So that maybe was just mitigating the roadway crossing solution. Uh, the, the roadway crossing drainage problem will fix their neighborhood drainage as well. That's one way of looking at it. Again, develop the mitigation solutions to address the highest flood risk as well as the cost for those areas. And then summarize the evaluations and those prioritization process that we develop as we come to uh, an end on the master plan. Again, the master plan, uh, we, we have known several low spots, but uh, we've never really dove into it to see what it exactly is causing it. Maybe it's just an undersized uh, culvert or just not enough uh, of a, of, a, of a channel there to, to handle, accommodate all the runoff that's coming. And as, as we develop more, because of course we'll be uh, receiving more uh, runoff. So that's one thing to be looking at as well. Uh, the results of the studies will enhance the aspect of the city's stormwater management program, such as, again, as I said earlier, the operation, operation and maintenance activities for public works, enforcement, and more refined local standards as far as uh, maybe looking at a drainage uh, criteria manual as uh, developers bring in new subdivisions or lots yeah. that are all being adhered to a strict standard as far as drainage goes. So the best management practices as well. All this will be identified in the stormwater plan. Now, <clears throat> the focus of the study, the main focus of this one will be the low, low water crossings, just mainly because that's the areas that we know about. Those uh, attribute to other drainage concerns. So in identifying and working with those areas, we may be able to handle and accommodate other uh, drainages that are being associated with those, with those uh, floodings. Again, the study's not focused on addressing flooding issues within private property and or HOA properties, but it will help the city in, uh, make sure that the ditches that we have or the underground storm sewers we have are accommodating the runoff appropriately and for the appropriate storm. So does that mean that it's going to be looking at all the different tributary little pieces that contribute to these low water crossings Correct. that may affect a neighborhood? So it may affect the neighborhood. So neighborhood. looking at those stemming okay. from that public area, may address the issue for that surrounding right. neighborhood. So a lot of the things we hear about are probably related to some of these natural drainage areas. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm okay. glad you said that because I was going to say, as, as the detective, some of the things you say, we're focused on low water crossing, but it really is, is broader than that. It's broader than that, that but that's, where, that's our starting point. That's the areas we do yeah. know. And yeah. then from there, we will expand to accommodate a, a, a drainage that may be stemming from that area yeah, and, exactly. and solve that issue. So that it's kind of a broader issue that may help more than one. And some of the things that I think through all the drainage problems and when we started this we had a list of all right. of them. Right, and we do and we have taken them and uh, I'll, I'll show you here as, map, as, as we go to the map, map. Right you'll see those areas that were identified by the neighborhoods are associated yeah. with these low water crossings. Right. Okay. So okay. in clearing up those areas it may help the overall yeah. effect. We won't know for sure because we have a, yeah. a main problem right. and, and, and it so would be those low water crossings. You've said it and I'm going to reiterate it. It's very important that the citizens understand this is a high level 30,000 foot view Correct. trying to understand where all the problems are to prioritize those because that's that we started this out by saying hey we got a lot of things and how do you even prioritize to know where you put the money first so this will help us there right. the other thing very important is looking at the uh, best practices from the drainage standpoint for the bigger drainage perspective is huge that's a huge part of this i mean that's very important to me right because as we move forward we're going to do it as best it can be done yeah, yeah. right so you can go beyond just the standard yes yeah do you want the situation so yes, the infrastructure. You said that. Yes, correct. Reinforce that. <laughs> That's correct. Is we got to maintain our infrastructure that was once yes. put in. It may be undersized now, but we have to make sure it's cleaned out and, and yeah. kept going by the operation and maintenance side, and then also the land development criteria. Sure. And here's the map. So here's all these uh, roadway areas are the ones that we identified. Some of these uh, have been attributed to neighborhoods, as they called in, saying that we're having issues because it's backing up and it's coming onto our our HOA property or into our private property. So. By addressing these, and obviously that's quite a bit of projects to handle at once. Yeah. Some of these may be knocked out simultaneously. Some of them may be done at different dates. Yeah. But that's we just went ahead and just throw everything out there, yeah. and that's yeah. what we did. Sure. Some of these are along tributaries. Some of them are along low water crossings. Um, obviously, the floodplain is just a natural way that the yeah. it just accommodates the over the runoff. So 
those won't be in any way, shape, or form. So, but it's just addressing the ones upstream. Okay, so again, what does flooding mean? So the, from this point of what we're doing with the stormwater master plan is looking at from the public right-of-way areas that we can come in there and put public money to work to make sure that we're conveying the, the runoff into the proper areas, making sure it's staying underneath the road and to keep uh, safety vehicles moving or people going to where they need to, to avoid stuff like that on the right-hand side. Uh, flooding can occur in your front yard from lots of lot drainage, which is one of the yeah. criteria I'm already changing internally to make sure that they get into a proper area to can, we either be the ditch, the curb, or whatever uh, drainage conveyance we have for those facilities, yeah. those good. That's good. Again, as I was talking about the floodplain, um, we do, and we try not to, but we discourage as much as we can in the flood fringe right there. So this comprises the whole floodplain. You have your floodway where we do not allow any development. You can build in the flood fringe, depending, you have to build the house a foot above yeah. the base flood elevation. All that will be determined. Again, the goal of this study is not to reclaim or reduce the floodplain limits. Right. If, if the citizens out there have any issues with the floodplain, they can always call Public Works yeah. and we can try to help them out as best to ascertain what issues they may be dealing with. Yeah. But, but right now we don't plan to approve things. No, we don't plan to do anything like that. <laughs> and if we do, we'll require you to do a drainage study. That, uh, but again, the 100-year floodplain is based on the 100-year storms now yeah. in years past. I don't know what the requirement was, but that is the requirement today to make sure that you design these strange facilities to the 100-year storm. Yeah. So it doesn't mean it'll happen every 100 years. It can happen a couple times throughout the yeah. year, yeah. but it's just the amount or the volume of runoff water that you're getting is what we're designing the facilities for. So again, what are the next steps? We gather the uh, feedback. I'm going to provide you to those in uh, fr the Friday report so that everybody can have an opportunity to take a look at those. We'll start looking at those and make sure that the roadways that we identified are all there. If not, we'll add those. There are a couple of neighborhoods we've added to since our uh, public meeting, so we did find some that we weren't aware, and we are going to address those two as part of this map and whatever other areas we do find. We'll evaluate the feedback, uh, look at, to compare that against existing roadway crossings, rank those pro roadway crossings or, pro or uh, projects that we need to look at in conjunction with one another. We'll prioritize those, bring those to you, and show you what, here's the list, Here's the cost associated with how do we want to yeah. divvy these up. And so all that will be summarized in a report towards the end of this, this year. Yeah. So again, we did the early uh, data gathering for 20, for this year. And we're going to take that get data, take a look at it, see what it, reshuffle the whole map again and see what we end up with still, and then take that back for another public meeting maybe in the midsummer. And then from there, start looking at proposed mitigation solutions. Uh, be prepared for some low water crossings to, from FEMA grants to help us accommodate some, uh, accomplish some of these yeah. projects and then provide a final drainage, drainage master plan by the end of 2019. So there's a lot of work to this. There are the three components that I'm focusing on this one, which is the infrastructure, make sure it's sized correctly, then the operation and maintenance to make sure those infrastructures that get put in place are being maintained and clean to convey it, and then of course the drainage design criteria to make sure that everybody is putting their runoff where it needs to go. So. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you. Sorry, I kind of summed it into quick. If you're going to apply for grants, if you're going to apply for grants, is that in the fall, like a lot of the grants are? It depends what type. Most of the road crossings would be under the STP, so that would be in the fall, yes. So would we miss those, or would well, we, we could Well, we would apply now, but what would happen is because our engineering isn't farther along, we'd be penalized in the point calculation. And so there's always a chance you could fund it, it's just not as likely. But it's still but worth going ahead and applying. We'll probably just put it to get our we'll name put in there. Right? Anyway. But yeah. the other thing you can do is there's bridge grants out there. If the bridge condition isn't sufficient, you can apply for those as well that will allow you to elevate it out of the floodplain. So, okay. so a couple of different options. ways we can. But the more work you have done like this, the sure. more detail you have, yes. it tells you where the bridge is going to go yeah. so that you don't, they don't have to pay for that in the grant, the more chance, the higher percentage chance you have of getting funded. And there is, there is a little bit of funding in this plan to do some preliminary engineering for some of those low, low water crossings, which will, which will give us more points as we Excellent. go through those grant processes. Great. So, yes. Thanks, Ray. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay. We're going to talk about the FY20 budget calendar a little bit. Well, I'm used to seeing Adrian get up to talk about this. <laughs> Y'all are confusing me still. <laughs> uh, good evening, Marion City Council. I'll be uh, brief. I don't have any slides because uh, this information is a little bit too hard to read on the, on the screen. So I did provide the calendar in the packet and also a hard copy at your desk um, for reference. Um, as a reminder, you would be normal be seeing Adrian uh, doing this, but 
Jerry has afforded us the opportunity <laughs> to cross training uh, this year. They're so. still smiling when they say it, so. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so what you have before you is the uh, uh, kind of proposed budget calendar. Um, this time of year we present this to the City Council to receive any feedback before we take this and provide it to staff and it also allows everyone to, staff and council, kind of prepare for upcoming dates, the summer dates, um, so you can begin calendaring out um, your own personal time and things like that. Um, the major change that we've done this year, as you'll see in the summer months, June and July specifically, uh, last year we had a standalone work session uh, for a budget, um, preliminary numbers, and then um, as the numbers get closer to the final. What we've done with this budget calendar is we're still going to do those work sessions, but we're proposing to do those before regular city, city council meetings. Um, we'd probably start those at 5 o'clock like we did today. Um, last year those work sessions typically went about 45 minutes or an hour or so, similar to what Mesa just did. So we're proposing to add those to an, a regular standing meeting so that we don't we can free up additional nights um, during the summer months. And so that's our proposal. Uh, as staff, we'll be mindful of those meetings and not stack things on top of that. So those will be budget-focused uh, work sessions during this Ju uh, June and July. Um, and then you can see on here some of the required readings. Um, and as we move into August, we'll have the uh, city manager's proposed budget distributed to you on August the 2nd with the uh, work session on the 6th uh, for the proposed budget and then we'll move into later in August and September the formal adoption of the tax rates and the, the budget. A lot of stuff, isn't it? <laughs> so this is the schedule right here, Mark? It is. Yeah. Okay, yes. we can put it in our calendar. There's a tiny error on your send us in August. Um, August 20th is blue, but there's no August 20th listed. The blue. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's just the denoting a regular. So it doesn't need, it doesn't need there's, to be there's no, because there's yeah. no budget thing. Right. Thank you. Yeah. That helps me understand it. No error. No error. So <laughs> you're saying the meetings, the extra meetings we had last year only lasted 45 minutes? They're about 45 to an hour. <laughs> that seems longer. <laughs> Well, it's so, so much fun. No, I think it's to I keep us short. optimistic. Yeah, pretty <laughs> the budget meetings. Just <laughs> the budget <laughs> meetings. Oh, the, the, the budget meetings. Can we combine <laughs> them with something else? Well, they were talking about some of those meetings. George started talking about them. We added a few other items you know, to those meetings because they weren't taking them. Yes. Mark, I have so much information to you. We won't have any questions. There you go. I'll read it. I like okay, it. Okay, so like we're willing to give a shot at that, the approach, so yeah. the approach is taken them on. I am, I am, I think. Sure. It, you can always modify that. We can always modify that. Always, always, always stick something in it. Sounds great. Go longer. Absolutely. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay, so the last item is uh, always to, I don't, I don't see that we have any agenda items to move around or anything tonight, so I really don't have any comments on the agenda. Anybody else? We're clean. Good. Good. Okay. We're done. I'm going to close the work session, if it's okay. Uh, we're going to executive session. I'm closing the work session at 6. And we're now going to move into executive session in accordance with the Texas Government Code, Chapter 551, Subchapter D, Section 551.071 Legal, Section 551.072 Real Estate, and Section 551.087 Economic Development. We are now in executive session. Thank you. Very good.